right, welcome back. Welcome, go players, to another episode of the Purify Podcast. Today is January 25th, 2021. I am your host, Luis Palacios, with my co-host, Chris. It's your boy, Pokemon Trigger, please. How are you doing, Luis? I am doing great, dude. Can you believe that today we are actually doing a full Twitch podcast stream for everybody to see? Very interested in how people like it. Because, uh, you know, they get those channel points and stuff. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> uh, we are streaming on my Twitch channel this time around. Uh, we will definitely move the bots to YouTube right afterwards. I want to make sure I can edit it and make sure that things like that happen. Now, since this is the first stream, I only did the bare minimum. All I did was switch a few things here and there. Um, but if you guys want to do emotes and all those things later on in the podcast, that's fine. Um, I will always see it on the chat, but we'll get all of that sorted out eventually. So... Again, it's just going to be one of those things. But anyways, we are here once again to talk about Pokemon Go news, updates, and ranting about the game. Because we love the game just as much as you do. And I hope that everybody had a wonderful week. Um, Chris here had a wonderful last Sunday. (laughs) It was a a great night. Loved it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And definitely, uh, hopefully everybody had a good time over the the last week for sure. So let's make sure that we remind everybody that we are part of the Professor Network. I forgot to completely move you over over there in this here. So I just can see I'm already messing things up in the stream. (laughs) Let's move you up back again that way. All right. Yeah, look better. Thank you so much. So again, Professor Net, uh, Professor or PokemonProfessor.com slash Purify Podcast. This is the best place to be through things. Um, we are affiliated with them. Wonderful people. Make sure you follow them up, load up, uh, gotta watch them all. Special conditions, Pokemon Masters, all the shabam. Make sure you check them out as much as possible. But yes, we're here once again. So Chris, how was your week? Uh, it was decent. It was decent. Um, (laughs) I got more shinies than I'm used to, honestly. Um... I'm not sh- I don't think it was boosted other than spawn wise, but I was able to get an Aaron. Uh and oh ooh, Roselia. I got Roselia before the calm day. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely need another one of those. Oh my um, god. <laughs> <laughs> I was able to get a, a a shiny Kyogre. I was honestly hoping more for a Groudon. Uh, okay. but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Of course. And um, I actually hit up a Skarmory nest today Ooh. and was able to get another shiny Skarmory. Ooh, you um, could get the honestly, extra large candy in that one. I wanted the extra large candy, but the shiny was nice too. I do need to grind the extra large candy though, yeah. for sure. I'm sure that by this Wednesday we'll have a shift in nest anyway, so hopefully you can uh, take advantage of that for sure. Uh, where is this again? Because I kind of want to actually uh, share that up. The Skarmory nest is at DeSoto. Uh, okay, that might be a little too far. Unfortunately, I will be working probably all week anyway, so. <clears throat> yeah, so basically. Um, but yeah, the shift the gears to recap, since you already passed it over to that part. <laughs> um, definitely. Uh, so you got you got those Chinese, no hondos at all? No, no. My hondo luck is freaking horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, well, let me go ahead and tell everybody what I got. Uh, for the hundo category, I can probably tell you this much. I didn't get any hundos this week. Surprisingly what? enough. I know, I know, I know. It's a little bit surprising. It's a little bit surprising. I didn't. I like... would have put money on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, the last one I got was the Dusko, the Shadow Dusko, which I'm still happy about, of course. Uh, but that was on the 17th, so that was, I think, two days. Oh, no, the day of the podcast last week, so... Uh, that was, of course, you know, we can't count that. Uh, we can't count that. However, for Shinies, we did, I did, um, I want to say I did accumulate quite a bit of them. <laughs> um, started out with the uh, Groudon and Kyogre, which you guys already knew about, but I already got two more Kyogres after that. And a 96, 15 attack Groudon. Ooh, that's hot. 15, 14, 14. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, that's hot. That's hot. <laughs> oh god yeah this was a beautiful shiny to get um shout out to one of my friends in taiwan and all that it was actually pretty cool actually not really a friend it was mostly a global raid group that i've been following for a while and i've just been getting through them not an easy thing but if you come to my twitch streams that's basically what i do almost every other day uh and uh one of them that of course from the hoenn celebration was a 
Uh, chicken dinner, uh, Torchic. <laughs> Chinese Torchic. A 900 CP, so it was actually kind of cool when I got it. But of course, Chunky you know, chicken. I wanted to just clear out a few of my spawns at, home, uh, at my house, and all of a sudden I click on the chicken, and I'm like, oh, it's shiny. God dang it. <laughs> at least it's pretty. Hey, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll definitely be talking about why I have two Bareeps in just a moment. I do have those two, which was nice. That's nice. Um, but that was because of an event that we'll be talking about in the news section that unfortunately has already come to pass since it was such a short notice on it. By the time it was actually finished, the podcast was supposed to be, uh, technically we were su supposed to podcast on Sunday, but that didn't happen. So life happens. <laughs> yeah, life happens. I mean, unfortunately, but no worries. It is what it is. Um, you know, things like that happens for a reason. But uh, yeah, aside from that, let's go ahead and recap the Hoenn event. The Hoenn celebration just came to pass, literally ending on Sunday nights at 8 p.m. And, you know, we had spawns, we had raids. Spawns were mediocre because there was a lot of starters. Uh, I wasn't complaining because I do like Mudkip. I've seen Mudkip in the wild a little bit more. Um, I want those extra large candies. But there were other spawns that were super rare. And there were some Pokemon's only feature in research and for the catch challenge chris how about you tell me about this i i personally was very i don't know stressed out because um i was one of the people that had a lot of trouble with the cat catch uh, challenge because mm -hmm. i was looking for uh plus one mining in, in the quest and also bacon uh which i i had heard was uh almost exclusive to raids you could find it in the wild but the chances of finding it in the wild were like next to none mm -hmm. i did see plenty of people that got it pure lighter was able to get one uh sadly after he did the raid yes yeah, so i but, didn't waste um, that a password especially yeah. a remote rate pass because i was like oh, man i gotta finish this and i can't i can't just not go with it you know yeah, and, and the, the thing that really sucked about Bigan was even in the raids, it was one of the really low, like, really low chances of getting it. Because what were there, like, four or five Pokemon in the raid pool for one star? Yeah. It, it was just horrible odds. Yeah, so, uh, which, actually, by the time this podcast goes out, or is live right now, they, some of the raids are almost over in our region. There are some left in the Pacific region, of course, but... Um, <laughs> The raids were just, eh. aside, there were only two Pokemon I cared about in raids, and that was the Grotto and Kyogre. Uh, I was I went ham on them for sure. Uh, there was a spin the a spin the raid, which again it was difficult to find. It's almost the same as a giveaway raid at this point. Yeah. Um, but everybody was doing spin that to get their shinies. A lot of people got that get, did get their shiny spin that, which was cool. Um, but again, it was just like one of those things that like I don't really want to waste a raid pass on this, you know. Aaron was spawning in there. Um, other things were spawning. Yeah, like, I, really nothing that they, they said, hey, you know, I got it right now. There were Mywell and Absols in race, which unfortunately I didn't do as much as I should have to try to get the Hundos. Mm -hmm. I did probably one or two Mywells. Never saw an Absol raid popped up in my nearby. So, and even if it did, it was, one. yeah, it was probably like when I was going home or something. So unfortunately I wasn't really able to do many things of that. Um, <clears throat> but when it comes down to it, and okay, raid pool, but again, the more prominent raid groups were mostly going for Grotter and Kyogre. Look, dude, it's like, the amount of people were going for those two legendaries was insane. Insane! Um, the, the little Discord group that I am, well, not literally, little, it's like a huge global Discord and everything. Um, they were doing a lot of Kyogre's and Grotter, and so you can barely get into any one of those raids because everybody was doing it. Like, everybody. People were going ham. Yeah. Well, like, I... there are, you know, a lot of things that you got to note about Grotter and Kyogre since they have, you know, pretty cool primals coming up pretty soon, you know? They're just good Pokemon, too. They're, like, top tier yeah. for uh, raids, too. Yeah, definitely. So now that I have the 96... <laughs> Kyogre, I'll definitely power, probably power that up. Since it's already a shiny, I'm probably just going to keep anyway. <clears throat> Do a couple of lucky trays for the uh, for the Kyogres that I have, and maybe a Grotter or two. And yeah, with the 98 Kyogre, regular Kyogre that I got, I think I should be set for now. I wanted the Hondos. I was looking for the Hondos, but you know, Hondos mm -hmm. are never an easy thing to get. Ah. And, uh, I, I don't know. Even uh, the f I know the free-to-play players were uh, kind of annoyed at the capture part 
for uh, Groudon yeah. and Kyogre. Though. I actually heard a lot of people say that they were not able to finish the whole event because of those. <laughs> because oh, and the no. only problem is okay. So as you guys, I have, I've, I've, as I have mentioned before, Minor and Plasm were only in research. Begon yep. extremely rare in the wild and mostly available in raids. The Minor and Plasm were not super hard research to um, do, but they were hard to find. Yes. And once and it was you like find 50, them, 50 for one right? Of those. If it's with, if you find them, it was a 50-50 chance to be able to get either one of them. So, aside from the other event that we're going to be talking about in just a moment, there was a surplus of people that were saying, "Ha, I couldn't finish this because of this and that." And even through the shadow ones, uh, during the uh, senior event, people were saying that they couldn't get one of the two, and I'm surprised they didn't because they did all the balloons and everything at the time. Um, just the, f honestly, it, it's just a roll of the dice for the shadow Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, at least you could do those from home, I would say. Yeah. You yeah. had to get like lucky with, uh, Pokestops. And what if people are in a rural area where they don't have a lot of Pokestops, you know? That's I didn't sure. even think about that till just now. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah. 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 It, it's just, it was one of those things when it comes down to it. So mm -hmm. keep in mind, it was just a lot harder than it should have been. Um, my, my situation was I found the Megon raid, I did it, I, then I got a Megon through a Go Plus encounter, so <laughs> even then yeah. I was like, okay, well, <laughs> that means I got another Megon. Um, plus on a minor, I was lucky enough to find the quest on my way home one time, and both of them gave me each one of the other ones, so I was actually in the 50-50 chance percentage to get both of them now. It wasn't too bad. I, at that point I was like, thank God I finished, because I think it was like... a day and 15 hours before the event ended and i was like "Ooh, i gotta finish this like i really gotta actually go out and grind uh to Same. see if i can find I, them it, it got to like yeah i got to like two days away i was like okay we're doing this yeah today. like we're doing this we're doing this it's like we're not, we're not wasting time you know so it was it was one of those things where it, it came down to it so uh mm -hmm. however uh once we get to the actual news you understand why there were a lot of people who were a little disappointed after you know just the struggle of it However, there yeah. is one more thing that uh, Chris did wanted to mention in the podcast, and this was a tweet <laughs> from Niantic. Um, it was from the responding uh, one of our personal people here, uh, well, not at community, but the community in Pokemon Go. So the guy tweets, how is one supposed to catch two Groudons and two Kyogres within, within five days? This is so unfair. Makes the game more enjoyable for everybody. It's become impossible to complete some missions. And then Niantic support, just like anything else. Niantic Cat just tweeting out here. Uh, Hi, trainer. Sorry about the trouble in finding Pokemon. Please try activating an incest, as this could increase the chances of carrying the Pokemon. That being said, any Pokemon appearance in the wild is random. Thanks! I freaking love that. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't know, you have not actually followed this. Legendary Pokemons don't spawn in the wild, except for the Lake Trio. <laughs> Which at that point is still like insanely rare. It's like probably worse than an unknown at this point. And even I then, I haven't the seen an unknown in a while. Anyways. Yeah. No. No. Um. I I could not believe that they sent that out. Honestly. Yeah. yeah as good yeah, as every, I saw that. Everybody out. was funny uh, making fun of it. It's like, sure, so, where can I buy this kind of incense? You know, it's like. <laughs> Uh, oh my God. that's a little crazy when it comes out there but last week was a little more fun there's still more um, more information still to come but still you know what were you gonna say yeah uh at least i did see that um niantic did make it easier to get mine and plus and bacon just through a certain event afterwards that we're going to be talking about yeah um it's just it was locked behind another paywall per se uh yes, yes they had and the no. Poke coin bundle so i all guess right, all right, it wasn't all right, all right, all right. hold on hold on hold on yeah. okay. we'll get we'll get to it can we just give us just a moment we'll definitely talk about the events uh details and everything but since that was all of the recap let's go ahead and move on to the research topics of today which are what well, the next celebration in the lineup which is what chris oh lordy uh we're still counting down to the canto tour uh, for the Pokemon Go Tour Kanto. Uh, but we're going to be celebrating Johto next. Um, so that's exciting. I love Johto. And all, honestly, I mean, Johto probably is my second best generation of them all. Uh, aside from Gen 6. I love Gen 6, but Generation right. 2 kind of like completes Generation 1 technically. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so I, I do love a lot of the starters in uh, Gen Two. So yeah, yeah, definitely. It's definitely one to look forward. Well, to. Well, let's go ahead and talk about what the gener the celebration of Johto comes with us. So trainers, we're excited to announce that Johto will be the next Ritual feature in Nakanda celebration. The Pokemon Go Go Kanto is right around the corner. Technically, two weeks from or three weeks from this week, eh, almost a month. <laughs> uh, what, when does it start? Well, glad you asked. Tuesday, January 26th, which is tomorrow on Tuesday uh, morning at 10 a.m. to Sunday, January 31st at 8 p.m. local time. So until the end of the month, we have this event. Features! And hold on to your horses. <clears throat> Chikorita, Cyndaquil, Totoda, Marip, Hoppet, Apon, Sunken, Gemma, Murkrow, Gligar, uh, Snubble, Slugma, Milton, and more will appear in frequent in the wild. And if you're lucky, you might encounter a shiny milk tank. So a little mm -hmm. cool blue shiny Pokemon is coming. It's, it's pretty shiny. I like that one. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, the following Pokemon will be hatching from eggs. From five kilometer eggs. Uh, Pichu, Cleffa, Iglypuff, Wooper, Tyrox, Mushum, and Larvitar. Larvitar in the 5k pool. Bruh. That's a first. That's what? That is very interesting. I, I need, like, all the shinies to... Yeah, yeah, well, I got Pichu, I got Cleffa, I believe. I, I don't have an Iglypuff, I have a Wooper. Tyrok is not shiny, Smushu and I have shiny, and Larvitar. Mm -hmm. Well, Larvitar, of course. Yeah, Larvitar. yeah, Larvitar we should all have, pretty much, if you did the combo. Well, I mean, that's also to the newer player, so, I mean, this is actually your chance. Yeah. But you have to make sure you listen to this event. So, enjoy event exclusive food reach stacks that award Stardust and lead encounters with Pokemon such as Chikorita, Cyndaquil, Totoda, Chinchou, Mareep, Sudowoodo, and Milton. I like the whole Milton, Sudowoodo line. I don't care about Mareep now. <laughs> and Chinchou it will be nice because I do still need the shiny for those. Same. It's a pretty one. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, the following Pokemon will be appearing in raids. And another list again Chikorita, Cyndaquil, Totodile. Mareep, Meryl, and Larvitar will be appearing in one star raids. Larvitar in one star raids, dude, that's uh that's actually another meta thing right there. Togetic, that's Espeon, Umbreon, Skarmory, and Milton will appear in three star raids. Now, eh, that's not too bad, especially because Milton is a shiny now new possibility and now tomorrow there. Com I'm curious if it's boosted though. If it's not boosted, that might be a waste of time. That true. You're right on that. Complete the Johto Team Collection Challenge during the event by collecting Chikorita, Cyndaquil, Totoda, Sudowoodo, Sunken, Murkrow, Smurgle, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, Milton, and Larvitar to receive 15 old, uh, Pokeballs, 10 Ultra Balls, and an Incense. Head over to the Today View to track your progress. Now, that is interesting, Smurgle. Now, I do understand. Snapchat. Yeah, I do understand that Smurgle has been appearing more in, in Snapshots, so it's actually not bad. Plus, I already got my Hondo, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, but that's actually an interesting to say. Now, that could be a, a really bad way to end the event if they don't do as much snapshot as it should be, you know? It's like, this may be the whole way to say, hey, this sucks because it's Miracle, you know? So, <laughs> so the Wood and Milton, that makes more sense at least. Uh, yeah. get Pokemon that know exclusive text from 2018 Community Days. Uh, if you evolve the following Pokemon during the event, their evolutions will also know their exclusive attacks. So, Chikorita, Cyndaquil, Merip, and Larvitar, all evolve into their final forms, will know their special moves between Frenzy Plan, Blastborn, Dragon Pulse, and Smackdown. You know, I saw Pokey AK make a post of, uh, Little Totodile, like, crying because he didn't get Hydro Can in this event. Yeah, well, I don't know if they're going to add him in. But... No, they can't, because Totodile was actually the beginning of Community Day during 2019. Ooh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. so unfortunately, he was kind of scrap over to that. Oh, was it 2017? One of the two. I mean, like, for some reason, Totodile was, like, the end. Yeah, because it because it should have been the last. It will yeah. be the last one, yeah, out of the three because of the water starter line. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, no, he was uh, twenty nineteen Pokemon, so he technically didn't get the ability to. Which also, if you did mention this, um, a lot of people are actually saying, why did you just complete the three starters and give them all their community moves? No, it has to be specifically for twenty eighteen. You know, it's like I that's kind of like I don't understand why they decided that way. 
But again, Bayleaf usually continue on with Labrador, Quick Lava after Flaffy, and things like that. So, I mean, it was like a one and off between 2Ks and 10Ks at a time. Honestly, they're more irrelevant, too. Um, I don't think too many people are going to be complaining about <laughs> Totodile not well, getting okay. his move. The number one Pokemon Rebel Line in the community that moves is Labrador, for sure. Uh, which Tyranitar is oh, knowing oh, Smackdown okay. is a PEE monster, uh, but it is second next to Rampatters because of the of this um, the evolution line technically. Mm-hmm. Um, still, you know, if you have that or you get a shiny of that, that's like miles ahead of whatever you think about it. Um, mm-hmm. Flaffy and Marip, again, we'll talk about it in just a moment for that reason. Quilava uh, to Typlosion. Splashburn is an okay move to have. It's not the best, but still makes a good meta relevance in probably the Ultra League. Uh, I would agree. And it's, then, it's a really relevant in Ultra and Yeah, League. and Meganium also has either a small relevance in Ultra and a bigger relevance in Ray League because of its typing, so... Uh, depending on what it is, you might want to at least get a few of them just for uh, collection reasons and maybe see if you can trade them for uh, some good stats later on, definitely. But of course, that's not all, Chris, because we have, in addition, Entei, Raikou, Suikun will be appearing in Pfizer Race at different times during the af- uh, during and after the Jutsu Celebration event. Entei will be appearing in Pfizer Race Tuesday, January 26th at 10 a.m. to Sunday, January 31st at 10 p.m. local time. Then we have Raikou appearing in Pfizer Race from Sunday, January 31st to Thursday, or uh, yes, Thursday, February 4th at 10 p.m. local time. And Suikun will be the final of the three from Thursday, February 4th to Tuesday, February 9th. So one week for each one of the legendary dogs. I'm surprised they did three different weeks, but I guess they wanted to extend the Ray Boss uh, a little bit more instead of just keeping it all in one week and then having to do different Ray Bosses for the next three weeks after that. Or even just squeezing it to a weekend. That would just suck. Yeah, yeah. Especially since all three are shiny available. And, I mean, they're not they're like their cool. biggest relevance when it comes down to it. I never really care about Suicune. I got a Hondo Dente and I got um, a 96 Raikou. So it's not really that much thing when it comes down to it. Out of all of them, I think Raikou is probably the most relevant. Yeah. Just for raid. Uh, Suicune's good for PvP. Entei... And then you can just throw he's it in into go some uh, Tingle Rocket stuff. <laughs> he's pretty, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's nice pretty, to he's look pretty. at. Although his shiny is actually pretty cool. I like Int shiny a lot. I love his shiny the most. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, out of the three at least. Up next, Pokemon Gold Kanto. Tickers are not available in the shop. For more details, the special event, be sure to read the blog post that they posted a while back. And of course, that's really it. So the final generation event. By the way, thank you so much, Gunter. (laughs) Uh, um, The final generation event happening uh, before the Kanto event, which is crazy to think that we're finally to this point. And dude, can you believe that January is literally a week away from ending? Like, what what is going on? What is going on? Like, seriously, I don't understand how the weeks are so fast. I think because we do all of this, like, between the podcast and play the game and you go to work, I feel like the weeks just, like, fly by. Doesn't even matter what I do, you know? It, it it feels like the event is over after like two days of playing. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Every time. Yeah, that's a, that's the crazy part when it comes down to it. Uh, but yeah, no, that's uh, Johto event. Now, you want to talk about the next event that came to pass in less than a day? Yeah, I was only able to play a tiny bit of it. But uh, if you didn't know, Mega Ampharos is in the game now. And uh, to get people ready for it, we had an incense day featuring Mareep. Um, I was definitely excited for it because of more so the Pokemon they had uh, around Mareep, not necessarily Mareep itself. Um, it was sort of an event to help people with uh, the Hoenn event uh, for capturing Pokemon. Um, if you didn't know... Uh, Ampharos is in raids at least the 19th until the 24th. Oh, so it already ended. Oh, what? Really? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. I'm reading it wrong. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I know I saw one in okay. a raid today. What okay. in the world? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. No. So, <laughs> let me rephrase what Chris was confused about. <laughs> uh, so, Mega Ampharos came, came in raids from Tuesday, January 19, uh, 10 p.m. local time, and has stayed in Mega Raids since then. 
Mm-hmm. As you guys know, Mega Emperors becomes a dragon typing, and this community day move was actually Dragon Pulse. Uh, so that was actually something like, you know, many, 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 many moons ago, we were like, why is something like Ampharos getting Dragon Pulse? Which again, you know, comes to the typing. The only reason why they did this, and this was in preparation many years ago, was because of the Mega Ampharos addition to the game. We knew Fabio it was coming, we just didn't know because at the time we only had like three generations at best. So, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so that's the reason why Mega Ampharos had to nerf uh, Dragon Pulse. Now, during this event, which unfortunately was actually, again, posted really early in the week and ended before we had this podcast, uh, the additions to the Pokemons, this says, in, a, in addition to Marip, different Pokemon who attracted to incense at different times. During times that feature electric type Pokemons, you might encounter Pikachu, Magnemite, Bolter, Chinchou, Marip, Plasso, and Minom. Which, if you play the event, you guys know that Plasso and Minom were spawning a lot more from the incense than anything else that appear. I did get a, a couple of extra uh, uh, Stunfish, which was the extremely lucky encounter in the pool. Yeah, uh, I thought it was interesting that they had a little something for everything. Because yes. uh, I know some people like the extra large candies for him for the Galarian version. Yes, and then during the Dragon type hours, Dragon type Pokemons and Pokemons that evolve into Dragon type Pokemon will be attracted to Incense, including Horsey, Dratini, Marip, Trapitch, Ribaba, and Swablu. And of course, if you're lucky, you could encounter a Pagon. Mm. Mm. That was not that was I not mean, the dragon I was looking for, you know. <laughs> I know what dragon you want. <laughs> this is not the dragon you were looking for. Nah, man. I, I, at this point, I don't even care about Gable. I just want to, like, Dino or something. <laughs> Dino what you want. Yes, Dino is what I want. It would have been nice to have a Dino, oh, but... Gosh. Uh, a little less mediocre. It was a five-hour event. 11 to 1 uh, and 2 to 4 were electric types. Then from 1 to 2, 4 to 5 were dragon types. Now, I played I like- the horror entire thing. That's the reason why I actually have no Pokeballs right now. Um, <laughs> because I was running the Gold Plus. Uh, I was going to basically try to get as many from Grey Balls, but then I had to go out and do a couple of things that day, and then I just ran the Gold yeah. Plus the entire time. Um, I missed that a lot during the Dragon the dragon one, but in all honestly, I, there's a lot of Pokemon that I don't even want, aside from probably mm-hmm. Dratini and Begon for extra large candy. Um, and then on the other one, the best ones I liked seeing was Boulder and Chinchou. I didn't really care about Plaster mm-hmm. and Minor just because I already completed the, the quest. And then I didn't yeah. really want more shinies of those if that's the case. <laughs> nah. Uh, I do like that they split it up, um, based on, like, the different times of the day. Yes. So they weren't forcing you to play only during, like, a three-hour period. Yes. Um, I did, I did like that. I thought that was very uh, nice of them. Yeah. <laughs> Screw me. Um, <laughs> uh, when it comes down to it, uh, it was mostly the direct, like, electric type. Uh, the dragon typing is just common for it. Now, if you already were able to evolve an Ampharos to Mega Ampharos, if you did it during the evolution time of the catching incest time, um, you were able to get extra or extra mega energy from doing it. However, you did have to be able to evolve one mega emperor before the event itself. Mm-hmm. So you already needed to have at least two hundred uh, mega ca- mega energy to be able to evolve them before you got an extra boost from catching every Pokemon in that adventure. Mm-hmm. I unfortunately did not have enough at the time, so I was not able to take advantage of this in that regard. You know. <laughs> Um, but if you did, congratulations. If not, that's cool. I'm going to do this uh, real quick. This uh, absolute raid that I got po- pulled up into. <laughs> it's right next to my house, and she invited me to it. Well, I mean, it's, right it's not like you're going to run all of the podcast and do it, you know? No. No, no, no. <laughs> it's uh, a good shining. It's a good shining. But yeah, that's, of course, the Marip day. That unfortunately, nobody actually knew about it until then. What's up? And we get the, and we get the friendship. Oh yeah, we'll see if we Ooh, get like a friend. I don't have to open a gift. <laughs> wow. <laughs> all I'm right, crazy. all right, all right. While we do this real quick, let's talk about, about an event that was just announced this morning on Monday, uh, and see what exactly it is about. Chris, 
I don't know how excited I am for it. I, yeah. I think a lot of people are going to be uh, pretty lackluster with it. <laughs> Nothing to sneeze at. Get ready for limited research featuring Sneasel. Plus, new time to research is coming out. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have Shiny Sneasel. It, it's one of the boosted Shinies. Um, it's been featured in countless events. But this is probably your best chance to get to Shundo. Um, I would say. I mean, it's been in quests and stuff before, but it, it's going to be in, like, almost all quests, right? So, yeah, it's going to be your best chance for getting a Shundo. Well, considering that we're about to check for a, a dark type here, you're going to get the shiny now? Let's see. Three, two, one. Let's do it. No shiny nope. for either one of us. What's your number? Uh, 1406. It's not... It's not the best. 1430. I have a 96 shiny, so I don't need a good... Excuse me? That sounds very good. That sounds very good. That oh. is very, very good. Yeah, let's see. Uh, I I did say that maybe I didn't get a hundo before this. Mega Absol? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, come on. <laughs> is it a 98? It's a 15, 14, 12. No, I'm sorry. 15, 14, what? 13 actually that's weird yeah i thought, I thought it would be higher than that I, I actually thought it was actually, i thought it was higher than that for sure i thought at least a 96 there no mm -hmm. but it's a 93 actually Interesting. so close but that means anything about 1430 will be good <laughs> well that was our rate for the day good luck everybody <laughs> anyways uh sneasel re limited research uh on saturday january 30th which is this coming saturday from 8 a.m to 10 p.m Local time. Goodness gracious, that's a 12-hour event? No, that's... It might be. That's a 14-hour event right there. 8, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. local time? That's Yeah, 14 hours. 14 hour event. That's crazy. That's... Okay. You can complete event exclusive real research tasks and lead to encounters with Sneasel. If you're lucky, you might encounter a shiny Sneasel. You can also look forward to an event exclusive time research. Hmm. The time research, the new time research from Tuesday, January 26th, which is tomorrow at 10 a.m. to Sunday, February 7th at 8 p.m. local time. You can complete a Team Go Rocket team time research line that leads to an encounter with Ho Ho that knows Earthquake. And good luck in, in completing this research challenge, trainers. Hmm. Okay. The Ho Ho is cool, but we just had him like a month ago. <laughs> uh the the only thing that's good about that is the earthquake that's it yeah i mean i mean uh yeah. you only get one right yeah i mean i don't think they're gonna give you more than one at a time nah nah uh sneasel so, is okay i mean just like chris said having the hondo or the shando wouldn't have been a bad idea um but again it's just another pokemon where we're like why do we uh, why are we getting events for this i mean at least it's not pay events trust me if that would have been a pain event we're done. Like, right here. Like, we end the podcast right here. We end the, our careers right here for Pokemon Go. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a it's an extra event, you know. I appreciate something. Uh, I just know it's not something a lot of people are going to be excited for. I mean, yeah. Uh, Myself I, included. I, I, I mean, I am off on that Saturday, but still, that's just like... Uh... Uh, why is this Pokemon the only one? Why couldn't they just put, like, Fanfy and put a Shiny on it, you know? It's like, that would have been better. It's still Gen 2. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, it, it, uh, I'm getting, like, vibes where I'm like, okay, why are you teasing us with this, like... Like, I feel like Niantic is going, like, uh, I'm not, like, super low on the events, and then all of a sudden, poof, you know, things like that. Ooh, Mega Infros. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, I got a Mega Infros right Ooh. Ew. Lucky. You never know. It's from Lambo, I think, or Lobo, or Juan, or whatever his name is. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, he invites me. I don't know if you're online, maybe. But anyways, uh, yeah. The, that is, of course, the Soft Research Day, which again is not the most exciting thing in the world. Before we get off the track, now there is one actual piece of news that I want to talk about, everybody. And this was actually a controversy in the last twelve to eighteen hours. Yeah. <laughs> so, as you guys know, the entire world is going for a level 50 grind. The level 50, 
being like the best thing that you can actually do or get or whatever. Um, but since the Go update, everybody's been trying to make sure that what are the next steps for the, for the line, of course. Now, if we go on Twitter, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and go through time and space. Let me make sure that I am in the right time here. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's move on to his. You guys don't want to see the Mega Amphros, don't worry. <laughs> so on January 24th at 5.06 p.m. our time, Eastern time, which is a completely different time, as you can probably already see here, um, that Mr. Fleeskin reached level 48 in Pokemon Go, which also shows the level 49 requirements, which are ten, uh, make 10 trades with Pokemon Scott at least 300 kilometers apart. Obtain 50 lucky... Uh, Pokemon in trades and send 500 gifts to friends. Now there is a completed task that is of course having 35 platinum medals. So all of this combined makes your requirements to get to level 49, which was cool. I mean, Fleeskin has been doing this since the beginning. He hasn't skipped one day of the event of the uh, the, the grind to level 50. And cool, mm -hmm. you know, being able to do all this is fine. Now, if we go back to the next post of his. He talks about the 40, level 48 challenges that you get, you know, the encounters, the next pages of it, the things that you get, and things like that. So, like, three raid passes, the other one gives you a Pokemon encounter, some Stardust, and some experience. Cool. He even tells us, like, you know, what the Pokemon is in the encounter, and that was a Golet. Okay. I'm okay with that. Yeah, he, he wasn't excited for that. <laughs> and then, out of nowhere, around... 11.33 p.m. our time. So the time that we're all about to go to sleep or already sleep at the time off. He says, Niantic Help, I have sent over 100 gifts to friends today and for absolutely no reason whatsoever you have reset my progress to level 49. This is incredibly discouraging and completely unfair to have my progress taken away from me. Fix this ASSAP. Now, he did say in an, in a, an extra post right here that said, I don't feel like trading, I don't feel like sending gifts, I don't feel like doing anything towards level 49 because now I also have no idea if Nyetic will just randomly wipe my progress. Mm -hmm. So, when it comes down to it, you know, we were like, okay, what happened? And this, he was not the only one. Everybody else who was able to reach level 49 at the time of this, of this post had their, their times reset. He, like I said, he wasn't the only one. There's a lot of people. And it was a rage happening last night for that reason. I was asleep, so I was actually not even uh, understanding what was going on until I woke up this morning. Australia be like. <laughs> so Niantic does revert the information or does revert it back an hour later in his time. However, though, instead of reverting back to the original time, the original trace and everything... They just simply made him a level 49 player, regardless of what happened. So he got compensated, just like he said, level 49. I know still what I prefer my exact progress to be reset the way it was, but I won't be complaining. I'll take the advantage of this. Next up will be level 50, baby. Let's freaking go. <laughs> so he got level 49, and everybody who was affected through this reset got actual the level 49 rewards and the level 49 badge, which... <laughs> Uh, and there's two sign of the coins to the community to this. It's like, why did they do this? And I'm glad they did this. That's one of those two, you know. Um, when it comes down to it, it was okay when we see it. It's just that it would have been better for just the reset on the or put back their progress instead of that. But just like Chris mentions, it's a lot of work to be able to hit every single one of them that got affected through this and see what was their progress, right, Chris? Yeah, I, I honestly think uh, they were just making it very easy on themselves by just sending everyone ahead instead of going through all the logs and everything to make sure everything was correct. I understand why they did it. Uh, I'm sure it made a lot of people mad. They're going to be like, well, why am I not level 49 as soon as I hit it? As soon as I hit 48, you know? Yeah, definitely. But, That's going to be the, basically the uh, the rage of the community once a lot of people start hitting level 48. But yeah. that's probably a fix that they already gotten to the point of, you know? like It's like reversal. Yeah, if, if it's fixed, you know? Yeah, it's like reversal when he wanted to reach level 49. I believe reach level 48 right now. 
it makes mm-hmm. sense because he probably won't be affected since he didn't get that close to level to the next level, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So cool, not cool. That really depends on who, how you see it. Again, I do uh, congratulate Fleet Skin to reach this type of level because he grinds way too much. <laughs> Uh, but he does a lot of uh, a community a favor sometimes too. So he he deserved to be uh, one of the first, if or actually the first to hit rank fifty. Or, one of the uh, first level fifty. I, I think he mm-hmm. was the first if we go by times, but he was mm-hmm. very one one of the first level fifties in the world. Yeah. So he hit level fifty just around eleven p.m. to twelve p.m. this afternoon. Our local time. Mm-hmm. He stayed it almost until 3 to 4 a.m. last night to get level 50. So, real mm-hmm. quick, I do want to say congratulations, Flea Skin, for a job well done to literally finish Pokemon Go. <laughs> Dude, I respect that grind. <laughs> that is a grind, yes. So, he did say level 15 Pokemon Go first in the world. Thank you so, so much for tuning into the stream and watching this momentous moment live when it happened almost over 5 thousand viewers at a single moment and it was incredible so as you guys see right here the very first level 50 player in the entire world crazy 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 oh boy well again congratulations let's get into the next piece of news pvp get good get reckless here we go (laughs) i'm ready (laughs) Let's do it. <laughs> Catching hands, boy. Man, definitely, definitely. So, as you guys know, the Silt Arena has been going through a month worth of rest, aside from their invitationals that we mentioned last podcast. However, though, now we have news about the next brand new uh, cup in the Silt Arena. Mm-hmm. And it's time to talk about the Labyrinth Cup. I don't know how you say it, dude. <laughs> oh. Labyrinth. Labyrinth. That, that's correct. Is that right? Are you sure? I don't know how to spell. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the Labyrinth Cup from February 1st to February 28th. Again, it's a smaller month just because of February. We have the Flutter Go, which, what is the meta for this one? Uh, it's, interesting. It's something uh, I'm not surprised about, but um, it's it's definitely one of the coolest metas they've done. I think it's uh, something that's going to be talked about for a while. Yes. So um, this yeah. one means bring your strongest team of six with a max CP of 1,500, just like we know, with no typing repeating at all across the entire team. So note that there are going to be a few bands on this. Uh, the bands are Wobbuffet, Asumeril, Metachamp, Mew, Galarian Stunfix, Defense, Deoxys, Cresselia, Hypno, Umbria, Metchamp, Scrafty, Surfish, Alteria, Bastion, Primate, Swamper, and Megas are not permitted in this uh, Labyrinth Cup. The whole unique typing is interesting because what you have to see is what Pokemon has a unique typing between two types, technically. And then put it into team. Now, you cannot have the same typings. Let's say you bring a Mud Boy, just like uh, Quadsire. But you want to bring another one like uh, Wishcash. You cannot bring two of the same typing. You have to have a few full unique typing of meta Pokemon's relevance in that type. Yeah, I I, I think because of that, you're going to see a lot more people running uh, monotypes, such as uh, Politoed, you know, the new Weather Baller. Um, a, a lot of unique Pokemon that uh, normally we don't see in Sylph metas. Because mm-hmm. um, we'd see a lot of things like Frostlass normally, uh, just, just things that have OP typings. Yeah, but it's going to be really interesting to see. Well, it's going to be interesting because uh, let's look at PB Poke real quick. And the top Pokemon that we're going to see in this list, uh, there are the Ligaton and Dex- Dexper Extra Large, which is surprising. Mm-hmm. Um, then we have Celius, which is a Dragon Dark type. So that, that is a nice, du- unique typing. Vigorod being a normal type. Uh, Mandibuzz mm-hmm. being a Flying Dark type. Regirock, Registeel. Degaspree, Skarmory, and Wishcash. If we take away the extra large candies, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Um, I don't know if I can have a Legaton ready for this. That will be insane. 
I don't think I, anybody I'm has a Lickitung. To. I'm sure Lickitung, there's nobody we have in Lickitung at this point. Licky Licky maybe, but not Lickitung. Uh, Lick, Lickitung is something a lot of PvPers had looked at. It's just really hard to get the uh, extra large candies for like the really chunky, chunky ones. Right at this moment, uh, it's gotta have the legacy move too. Yeah, of a uh, body slam from the raid day. Yes, so it's it's interesting. I mean, right now we probably don't have enough candies unless you did like a bunch of raids or a bunch of catching of Lickitun, but we don't have the extra large candies to get Lickitun. Digger no. speed though, that's actually okay because you I mean they're spawning <laughs> in the wild like crazy right now. Digger speed though. Uh, so <laughs> technically, it will be less Lickitung but more Digger speed unless you really are like they are in there. I agree. And then Celiots, uh, everybody has a Celiots. Um, bigger odd Mandibus. Well, Mandibus might be a little hard. Registeel and Registeel yeah. if you already did the raid, uh, their raid times. And then regular Digger speed and Skarmory are gonna be inter in interesting too. My concern is, I think for this cup, a lot of people are gonna be running uh, Charm for sure. Yeah. So you're you're going to have to run anti charm. You're gonna need those uh, fire types. You're gonna need those steel. Um, just something to block yourself in multiple ways from uh, charm or hard, uh, hard fast move pressure. I'm very worried about that. But at least you're not gonna see double charm. Not gonna see double uh, razor leaf. So at least you have that to look forward to. I think it's going to have a lot of flexibility for getting out of situations that are really bad, like Razor Leaf on a Mud Boy. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, you'll see at least one Charmer. You may even see a one yeah. Celiot in every team, if possible. Yeah, I, I'm really expecting to see a lot of Charm on people's teams. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah, that's the new Silt Arena Cup. Um, pretty cool. If you want to see more, make sure you go to silt.gg uh, for any information about the cup in the coming days, of course. I'm sure if you go to any of the Poker YouTubers, I'm sure they, they definitely see those kind of things. So. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, that is the Silt Arena. Now there is another cup to talk about. And this is not a Silt Cup. This is a GVL Cup, guys. It took me off guard. Yeah, and now it's actually just happening today. So, introducing the Love Cup, which will run from Monday, February 8th, to, uh, 1 p.m. to Monday, February 15th at 1 p.m. So, celebrating Valentine's Day, Love Month. In this format, only pink Pokemons with uh, 1,500 or less will be allowed to participate. Legendary and mythical Pokemons are not allowed. Here's a list of Pokemons that are eligible for the Love Cup, which, I mean, I don't think I want to go through the entire list. I, I'm looking at the baby Pokemon. It's making me laugh. Like, <laughs> why even put the baby Pokemon on there? Whatever. Yeah. And then, um, <laughs> please note that also Mr. Uh, Galarian Mr. Mine and Galarian Darnamakan and Galarian Darmanitan, Dar Darumaka and Darmanitan are not eligible. So you can see regular Dar uh, Darumaka, but not Galarian just because of its... Uh, colors, I believe. Color, yeah. Yeah, Mister Mine is more red so, or pink, I guess. Um, yeah. I looking at that. I'm I'm worried again about double. Th this time, double charm. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at the Pokemon, there's a lot of fairy types that are in the pink and red range. Well, so I think I'm personally going to be running Charizard and uh, anti charm. I, I forget what the second one I was going to use is, and then like, <laughs> you're going to love this. Something very weak to charm in the back. Uh, Scrafty. Yeah. Yeah. So be interesting. if we go to PB Poke, just like Rick has mentioned, you'll probably see a lot of the charmers. But again, the very first Pokemon that you want to see in there was Lickitung. Extra large. <laughs> Being number one Chunky. in the meta. Uh, Alolomola is number two. That, that actually surprised me. Yeah. It is a chunky Pokemon. It is. Medichet, extra large, which unfortunately I wish I would have been able to grind that candy. <laughs> uh, kill me now. <laughs> uh, Charizard, Go Fable, Wigglytuff. With wing attack. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised by that. What? Well, Charizard with wind attack. Isn't wind attack a steel move? That is a very legacy move. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to let's see. <laughs> In a row. I don't I, I don't think I'm gonna run wing attack. That's weird. Yeah. I guess for the fighters. 
I mean, you can't really run Dragon Bread on it. No, 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 no. no I, was, I was thinking Fire Spin was going to be the go to. Yeah. That's interesting. Wing attack. Well, Clefairy and Wilgatov, as you guys know, the two charmers in the meta. Scrafty Electro. That and... foul play, man. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Charizard Shadow, and then of course Medichan Regular, which I'm so sad that Medichan Regular is like so underneath regular X Excel one. <laughs> My uh, eyes it, cry. It's, it's that bulk difference, man. Yeah. Uh, those uh, 10 levels makes a huge difference. I know, but of course you gotta get your like 10, 15, 15 Medichan or something, or 5, 15, At 15 least... Medichan. Yeah, at, at least you win CMP. Uh, so I think normally, yeah, normally the higher uh, attack wins in the mirror, but versus everything else, you want the bulk. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But yeah, those are the meta relevance for the Love Cup. Again, the season of love is coming, which it will be one week before the actual Kanto celebration. It's going to be pretty fun there, Chris, isn't it? It's finishing before the Kanto? Yes. That's so sad with the Lickitung. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely. man. Well, it will Everyone's going to have the... an extra large Lickitung after that. Probably. Uh, yeah, it will be in actually the Monday off before the weekend of the Saturday. So, yes, it will be an interesting one. I'll probably be working all week anyway, so what's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> anyways um but yeah that is of course the luck cup and the Celta arena Celta arena labyrinth cup i think that's all that we got for today chris unless you got anything um, else you gotta tell me speak now and forget about your beach no I, th I think that's it um <laughs> i I, th I think the past few events have been pretty good uh they're doing a really good job of making the uh, achievements very obtainable for people, not locking anyone out, uh, even in rural areas, you know, giving the incenses to people uh, for uh, the event Pokemon that they need. So I'm, I'm interested to see what the next event does. You know, it looks like the hardest one's going to be Smeargle. <laughs> and Smeargle's pretty common. So uh, I don't think it's going to be that bad. Definitely, definitely. Well, Chris, it looks like that we are end of the times here. So thank you so much for everybody listening for our, once again, our very first Twitch full stream podcast. All of this will be about into YouTube in the next coming days. And then, of course, the podcast services, if you want to listen. Thank you so much for listening. Apple, uh, Apple Hi, Podcasts, Google Podcasts, our high radio stitcher, I'm a music, music, anywhere else in the podcast feeds in the world. Make sure you leave us a review if you can. I will greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much, Terry, for the 200 bits. <laughs> and of course, you know, you can go ahead and, and follow us on our social medias at Pure Letter Go and Christo0517. I wish we would actually change the handle one of these days, bro. Uh, it, it sets the name. It, it just doesn't uh, have the at. You can change the at, I think. Oh. <laughs> that's good to know <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah no worries of course you can follow us on there and um make sure you can email us any information or anything you want to talk about uh purify podcast at gmail.com don't forget to of course to check us out at the purify podcast.com so thank you so much again once again guys chris i think it's for you to let us go for the night all right everyone. Okay, a uh, lot of Pokemon to grind for. All the PV all the PVPers out there. Uh, there's a lot of good challenges. You know, if you're into Sylph, uh, definitely tell me what your teams are going to be because I'm very interested. I think there's a lot of different ways you can play the Labyrinth Cup. Uh, Love Cup is going to be very sweaty. I can already tell. <laughs> there's going to be too many teams to uh, watch out for, Charm Hole and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah. I hope you guys have a good one. You know, get all the shinies you can, uh, grind all you can, get to level fifty like Fleece King, and uh, <laughs> yeah, hope you guys have a good one. Peace out. Keep grinding, trainers. We'll see you guys next week.